Let's start with the next challenge. That's the crack me number four, that it's also in the same folder that it was uh, the other challenges. So we are going to start pretty similar. Uh, we just loaded my LLDB and then I will check with file which kind of binary I have. It's again an elf binary, 32 bit. So let's check the strings. In the strings, this time I, I have it back, the password okay and the password incorrect strings. I also have the Yoli crack me string. And the structure of the strings is pretty much the same. We just load the binary into LLDB and disassemble the main. In the main function, we can see that the structure also didn't change much. We have again two print apps followed by a scan app, but this time we also don't have a compare directly in the main function, but we have a call to another function, uh, the check function. So we check the check function and we see that here we have a string length call and then we have a compare. And then we scroll a little bit and we see that we have a scanf call and another compare. And then we have finally a printf with an exit and another printf returning to the main function. So it seems pretty similar, right? We check but uh, we are going to print in this list to print apps. One is in the 3B. That's the one that we want. So we know that we want to exit here, but let's continue. We are going to try the same approach that we did before with the other two binaries. So we import anger, we load the binary, and we start a simulation. We are going to try to reach the branching point like we did before. Anger finds again two active paths. We check what kind of input we need. But this time we just get garbage. So what happened? If we look into the check function again, we are going to see that this time our function is not as linear as they were before. The other two crackmates that we saw it before, we just had one branch point, exactly the last one that we have here. A compare and then uh, a jump to the wrong one or the, the right one and that was it. But this time we have a compare before so we have more than one branching point in this uh, binary. So what we need to do is tell Anger what we really want to find in this binary. We cannot just run to the next branching point. I mean, you could, but you can do it better. And the way of doing it a little bit better is let's check on the second printf that we didn't check before. This is the password incorrect. And we remember that the one before, it was the password correct. So what we are going to uh, store is an avoid address, an address that we don't want to reach with anger. And this would be this address here. This is where we are going to jump if it's wrong, uh, if the compare fails, we are going to jump here to store the password incorrect string and print F right after. So we want to avoid coming to this line of the code. We just store it in a variable. And what Anger really needs from, from us for finding the right path is a kind of a map. So this map, map uh, is called control flow graph where you have uh, a graph with all the functions and options that data can go from the beginning of the binary to the end. And we are going to try to generate this control flow graph. But as you can see here, we cannot generate this kind of control flow graph when we have, uh, when we are loading the libraries automatically. So um, what we can do here 
is so let me just stop this tab because it's going to kill the computer <laughs> we need to reload the binary into anger uh, deactivating the auto load lips well, the way to do this is, is pretty sim simple um, we are going to add this option when we are loading the binary with the project uh, call. As you remember in the beginning, we always do project, anger, project, and then we create it with the binary. What we need to add now is this load options and we turn the auto load libs to false. That's all we need to do to be able to create a control flow graph of this binary. So we overwrote the, the project now with these loading opening options. And now we can create the control flow graph. To create the, uh, the control flow graph, we are going to use the analysis and then we have the option CFG. And as you see, it generated and it's pretty fast because the binary is very uh, is small. Another feature that we have uh, on Anger is a knowledge base of functions. And they are, uh, as our binary is not stripped, we have a, like a table of symbols that is this uh, called knowledge base in Anger. So we can search the address of a function just by the name. We don't need to look in, in which address we are going to call that function or anything. Because uh, if it's like dynamically or if um, Anger is changing the base address where it's loading the binary, sometimes it, it, it can uh, happen and then it's change the address. So this way it's cleaner because you're not fast uh, like hard coding all the addresses, right? And if we remember from the check function, one of the functions that we wanted to call after printf was the exit function because this function was just called after the, the success, right? So we are going to find the address of the function named exit in our knowledge base of the control flow graph. As I said, the control flow graph is really like a map from our um, binary. And you have also like an index where you can search for the street names, for example, as we search for the function names and its addresses. And what we are going to do is exactly the same. We are creating this time just a simulation manager and we are going to use the simulation manager function explore. With the explore, what um, Anger is going to do is try to find or find address, trying to reach the exit function in this case, and it's going to avoid the avoid address that we just stored, that it is the uh, password not okay. So when we run this, um, Anger is going to do it by itself. We don't need to do much. And what happened is that the simulation manager found two uh, branching points. And one of the paths that it has now in, in its database is a found one. That means we, uh, we actually uh, find, have a path that leads us to the exit uh, or to the find address and it avoided uh, through two other paths. So let's check what is in the find address. As you see, we have here uh, a number like 87. So we are going to restore the 87 in, in your flag and test it. And there you go, this is our flag. I just want to give notice about this crack me. It has multiple solutions. So if the solution that you get from, from Anger uh, doesn't work into the 
OST platform, please let me know.